Throughout the four hours of a control line endurance flight, the plane gets lighter and lighter on the lines as the fuel burns off. By gradually moving the leadout guide back, line tension is restored so you can fly slower and save more fuel. My previous video proved the concept of a radio controlled leadout guide. This video will explore a more practical version. I started by building a two bay test section of a bumblebee wing. A lot of calculations went into the design, but there was still a lot of trial and error not shown on camera. This clip shows the fore aft design limits of the adjustable leadout guide. A servo placed in the leading edge won't interfere with the control lines, but how do we convert the 5 8 inch spanwise motion of a jack screw into the 1 inch cordwise motion of a leadout guide? The answer is a bell crank. This is the solution I came up with. There is the leadout guide itself, the bell crank assembly, the jack screw assembly, the jack screw retainer, and the servo with its mount. The Brodak ground adjustable leadout guide weighs 0.2 ounces. This new radio controlled solution weighs one ounce, the weight difference being about six minutes of fuel at the end of an endurance flight. The first step is to position the leadout guide rail. Clamps are used to hold it in place. We check that the rail is positioned correctly and that the eyelets can slide without binding on the rib. Once everything is aligned, the rail is glued in place with CA. A horn is attached to the sliding leadout guide and the eyelets are installed. Again, here are the design limits of the available adjustment. The next step is to install the bell crank mount. The servo mount slides into the servo platform. The servo is temporarily installed to make sure the mount goes in square. Everything looks good, so glue the servo mount to the platform. Now install the platform in the wing. Next is the bell crank. The quick link is installed on the short arm and the push rod on the long arm. The bell crank is held to the mount with a screw, washer, bushing, washer, lock washer, and nut. The horn is temporarily removed from the sliding leadout guide to be fitted to the push rod. These are the pieces making up the jack screw. That funny thing in the middle is the coupler, always hard to bend. This was my third attempt. The prongs of the coupler fit in the servo arm and the assembly is checked for smooth operation. It's so difficult to get the coupler centered, I decided to solder it fast once it was good enough. I don't think any of that solder actually stuck to the threads of the rod, so I decided to glue it as well. The jack screw retainer is held in place with a number two screw. It's really hard working in these confined spaces, but the magic of video makes it look easy. How many times did I drop that nut? The retainer was a little tall, so cut the top off. The quick link had to be removed in order to install the jack screw and servo. The servo screws were in an awkward location, but they were manageable. The easiest way to thread the quick link on the jack screw is to have the servo turning. The quick link is reinstalled on the bell crank and we are ready for testing. The test looks good. The robot servo is a variable speed motor and you are looking at high speed. By setting a lower speed and pulsating the control on the transmitter, very fine adjustments can be made to the leadout position. There are two things I've noticed so far. There is some play in the leadout guide. It's not much and it's mostly caused by the push rod. I'll get some advice as to how big a deal this is, if it will be a problem in flight. And I suppose I can always use a larger push rod with a tighter fit and less play. The other issue is that once the leading edge is sheeted, the mechanism becomes inaccessible. Maybe we can do without the top sheeting on the last two bays. So why bother with the complications of a robot servo and a jack screw? Why not just use a regular servo in place of the bell crank? This is the reason. A conventional servo draws power continuously to hold the leadout guide in position. In a 4-hour endurance flight, that could easily deplete a 2-ounce battery. 
When the battery fails, the leadout guide slides and you lose the plane. However, after positioning the leadout guide, a robot servo turns off. The jack screw holds the leadout guide in position without using any power. I'm still not committed to using the RC leadout guide in our next endurance record attempt, but it's worth serious consideration. I'd also like to investigate a mechanical solution using full up and down elevator to control the leadout guide. I'm just not sure I have the metalworking skills to build the miniature ratchets.